What's going on, Comic Book Nation? Jim Viscardi here at Comic-Con 2018. I'm here with the two people at DC Comics who make all the magic happen. Uh, magic, that's it. <laughs> magic makers. Jim Lee, <laughs> Dan <laughs> Didio. <laughs> Guys, welcome. Uh, we were just talking before, Jim. This is your thirty-second yes, Comic Con. Yes, in a row. In a uh, row. Wrong. Yes. It doesn't look. I'm an a full. Angel cr- <laughs> That's right. 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 <laughs> yes. Let me tell you, we had a walk through thirty miles of snow to register. <laughs> I mean, I just even beaver pelts. To, and, uh, I mean, to be fair, to get from to get from here to to your yeah. booth, it probably feels like that now. Like yeah, it was not. Snow. It wasn't even right. at the convention center. Yeah. I don't even know if there was a convention center. Uh, it was at the basement of a hotel off Broadway. But my first Comic Con, I got to meet uh, Jack Kirby. Oh, I saw insane. Frank Miller and Steve Root. I was too scared to approach those guys. <laughs> uh, but it was a surprise birthday party for Jack Kirby, and I got to meet oh, him that one time. Insane. So it was pretty cool. That's amazing. That's yeah. awesome. You guys are having an insane year. Like yes. in, in all yes. the best way, in all what feels like all the best ways possible. Um, I'm going to start with uh, DC Universe real quick because that's you know uh, a big thing that you guys are, are pushing. Um, did you ever, in your wildest imagination, think, even as a fan, you would be able to get a service like this in your hands? I, I never thought as a fan I'd ever see a Doom Patrol team. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's go right to the chase. Right? Right. Come on, seriously. You know, right. I don't know about right. that. You know, he's the techie guy, so yeah. I never be worried about it. I just right. look at the shows they're making, and I'm like. Never in my wildest dreams that I think you would be able to see something of right. the Titans or the Doom Patrol on, on television. Just yeah. never, never, never approached it. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I'll tell you that. I tell this story. You know, as a kid, I would go, uh, how I sort of assembled my knowledge about mythologies, you know, like the DC mm-hmm. universe, was uh, you, every time you visit friends in another city, you would go through their TV guide and say, what do they have here on their, on their stations, that, right? I used to yeah, do that too. I, I think we all did, right? And you circle it and you basically just sit there and watch these shows that you can't get at home. Yeah. And so that's how you kind of cobbled it together. You had to be a treasure hunter, right? And so cut to today and now it's all gonna be there at your disposal anytime you want to watch it on all these different devices. I mean, I, yeah, you would never have trapped it, man. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cool. So, I mean, this is something, it's also a service that's, that is just, you know, it's totally DC. You guys are in control. How does that affect what you guys want to do from a, a publishing Define standpoint? Define control. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, so you say like you know, God, you, know, you would never expected a, a Doom Patrol uh, TV series, but right. obviously, you know, with the service, you'll be able to serve up some old comics and things like that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Are you guys able to now sort of plan ahead with you know maybe knowing what's coming down the line right. in universe with what you guys are doing in publishing? Right. Well, I, I think uh, one. I think one of the things that really made this exciting for us, uh, just wearing the publishing hat, is that we can put the comics adjacent to the material they inspired. Right. right? And so that was one of the reasons we chose to go with a curated list, mm-hmm. so of thousands of comics, um, but most of the comics that are going to be on that list tie into the shows. So obviously with the Titans being the lead show, uh, you get the series from 1980 on, you're going to get stuff from Hawk and Dove because they show up in the, in the show uh, from the 90s and also from, I think, 2011, mm-hmm. uh, 2012. And so there's opportunities for us to kind of guide people in that might be coming and as a casual fan for the shows mm-hmm. and kind of guide them into comics and then show them the encyclopedia, show them the community and have them kind of dig deep into the vast universe right. that is DC. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys, I feel the the creative talent that you guys have been able to, to stack and, yes. and put together, I feel has never, uh, never been better. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll start with that. We'll start with Batman for a second. Right. I mean, yeah. You've got Tom King who uh, is just just crushing it with Batman. That's, absolutely. <laughs> and, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. What's it like for you guys to, you know, when you're sitting down and talking with Tom about his plans for, for Batman, is it something where he comes in and he's like, I've got this giant long roadmap and you guys are like, okay, boom, let's go? Or is it more collaborative as his run goes on? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what, his, I, I call his run like a, a winding road mm-hmm. in some ways. I mean, he has two very de- a clear, distinctive stories he's telling during the course right. of the storytelling. But how we get there is changing along the way, and it's, and, it, and it's amorphous. And what's great about Tom is that he's not locked into a very particular story and a very beat about what's going on. He knows he has a, a hundred-issue epic he's sort of telling. Right. But with other events and other stories taking place through the DCU and other things that are being created in the DCU, he also finds ways to tie into them to make it mm-hmm. feel like more of a connective universe. Mm-hmm. And you talk about the talent pool. I think what's also great about the talent pool today uh, for DC is that they get along with each other. They're friends with each other. Yeah. You know, 
Josh Williamson talks to Tom and Tom talks to Scott and Scott talks to Steve Orlando and Steve Orlando talks to, um, you know, James Tynan and Brian mm-hmm. Bendis comes in and Brian Bendis brings Kelly Sue DeConnick. And right. it just, it, they create this network that's working within DC and allows these things to orga- organically grow together rather than something that's mandated down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had a writer's summit not too long ago and we brought everyone in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it was really awesome to see the camaraderie and have them talk about their projects. And they were instantly making connections and ways to sort of take storylines and have it represented in their own titles. Again, kind of creating this cohesive mesh that kind of defines the DC universe. Mm-hmm. So it's been awesome. So have you guys been, so you mentioned the, the writers thing. Um, I feel like that is something if you guys have been doing, hasn't necessarily been as as public, but this one felt way more public as far as you, know, you had Brian, uh, you know, tweeting pictures out. Sure. There yeah. seems to be a bit more camaraderie. Yeah. With I, I think with we approached it with a bit looser sense. You know, it, it's funny because you could talk about Batman Fifty and spoilers and all this other going on. Right. And you know, a, a retailer once told us very long ago. He says he's never lost a comic sale based on a spoiler. Mm. You know, as a matter of fact, spoilers sometimes generate interest. So I, I, we're asking these guys not to feel so precious about the material. Mm. But be open and sharing because the more that they they know what each other is doing, the more that they feel comfortable with each yeah. other, the more they respect each other's work and know it. I think you get better product at the end right. of the day. So it's not about keeping things secret. As a matter of fact, we should be championing it and right. celebrating it right. and opening up right. to people right. and inviting them in. And right. that that's I think that's when you get the big win. Right. So obviously, you know, you guys have a bunch of big hits with Justice League and Batman and Superman. Um, what would you say is a book that you think more fans should be paying attention to? Currently, yeah. uh, you know, for me personally, Flash has been selling just so well. Right. It is one of our Flash consistent bestseller, yeah. um, and Josh has just been killing on that book. And and it's you, it's almost to the point we're taking for granted now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Seriously, yeah, right, it's yeah. so it's weird to say, yeah, but yeah. we're taking it for granted. But we go back and look, and this is the best sales on the book, except for maybe the launches of things mm-hmm. we've seen for twenty years. Right. Um, so. We're excited by by what he's doing in the stories and the fact that they found a way to really reintroduce things like the Speed Force and and b- challenge Barry and do so many things that I think constantly help you examine the franchise and and the conceits behind the characters. I think it's a, he's doing a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think one person that we haven't mentioned is actually Jeff Johns returning to the yeah. role as a writer mm-hmm. and as a pure creative. And so we've always been fortunate to have one project here and there, Jeff, because he's a super right. busy guy, a super busy guy. And now he's come in, I think we just announced yesterday, uh, working on Shazam, mm-hmm. he's got three Jokers. Uh, so it's incredible to have a writer of his caliber kind of re-enter uh, you know, this this great talent community that we have, and uh, there's gonna be some amazing books coming out for him. Well, it's funny, Jeff is the kind of guy who uh, will take a seemingly, you know, a character that no one really cares about but has some fans. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that's what he loves the best. Actually. That's, what I, that's what I gleaned from listening to the panel yesterday. So, are, are there are there characters of that of that you know sort of caliber that you guys are just waiting for like uh, Jeff to be like, okay, I'm going to do that. We're, one. we're already there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're already, yeah, yeah, we're already yeah, there. We just, oh, yeah, yeah, we just can't yeah. talk about it yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're there. There's, he he, well, he he found the barrel and he scraped the bottom of the yeah. barrel. And then he found what's underneath the barrel. <laughs> and he's going to have a chance right, to right, go right, after right, them. Right. Well, he's got that new uh, pop up imprint in yeah. right. zone, and that's going to have a lot of interesting stuff. So you bring up the the imprints, which feels like it's a thing that has been very successful uh, yeah. for you yeah. guys in a way, not only to sort of differentiate um, sort of groups of books, but also to find new readers. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what, what about those sort of ex- excites you the most outside of really, you know, sort of finding new readers, but I mean, you're bringing in all different kinds of creative talent, you know, uh, for this. Um, where, where do you see it going, you know, maybe a, a year from now, once mm-hmm. a lot of them just start to, to really get going? Look, we mm-hmm. recognize that creators have their own respective uh, fan bases. Uh, they love collaborating with people of like-minded uh, sensibilities. And out of that passion and energy, you can create clusters of books that are maybe more tightly interweaved within a broader spectrum of books. Mm-hmm. And that creates excitement amongst the fans, you know? And so you're able to kind of leverage these big names and their big ideas and form a cluster of books in a corner of the universe rather than just one book. And, and since they're still talking to each other and collaborating with one another, it still all kind of ties in together. Yeah. It allows you to really kind of pick distinct tonalities with key creators, 
let them drive the ship creatively and just grow the the universe organically in that fashion. Nice. Yeah, and I love I love this just for the invention and vision that they bring. I mean, if you look at it, we have Gerard Way on Young Animal. Right. We have Warren Ellis doing the Wildstorm books. We have Neil Gaiman coming in to help curate the Sandman books. Yes. Um, you know, we, we're looking at Jeff Johns coming in to do another his The Killing Zone, and there's a couple other creators that that have that sense of vision and and scope that we think can really help take things that we normally wouldn't be using and finding ways to to really reinvent them. Let me ask you guys one more question before I let you guys go. Sure. Uh, last year uh, I had asked, I'm a huge Legion fan, <laughs> and it's been a year and we still have no uh, Legion right. book, but you've got... You're right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can confirm. So, well, thanks can for we the confirm? Yeah. Can we confirm? <laughs> can we uh, confirm there is no Legion yeah, book? Yeah, yeah, no, there is no, it's been a year. Uh, it has been a year. It's been a year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. Legion on the calendar somewhere? See you next year? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. Right. But so, are there? I, I imagine um, there are, you know, titles like that that uh, I'm, you guys are just waiting to. I'm do. a huge Legion fan. I'm like you. Right. So, so where is it? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 right, right, right. I think there are reasons why we're holding certain things mm. kind of off the shelves right now, uh, and when they do appear, the reasons will be apparent. So. You know, um, I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready, yes, Jim yes. Your, your patience <laughs> will be rewarded. Let's all. And, I, and I can guarantee you that. So next year you'll go like, oh my God, like, that was so you know. so much. Right. You'll be thanking us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. right. But that we're not committing to. No, we're not. No, we're not committing to, to that. Oh. So maybe so it should have been any future. Some future, in the future right. time you'll be yes. like, guys, thank you so much right. for taking okay. the time to chat. Great. For more on DC Comics <laughs> and uh, San Diego Comic Con 2018, keep it locked in to ComicBook.com.